You know, they say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice to say, but I'll go nice. I ain't got nothing, no, no, no. I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing nice like to say. I ain't got nothing nice like to say at all. So I won't say nothing at all. <laughs> I ain't nothing nice. You hear me? Say, whoa, this your man Aldo Nice, and welcome to Nothing Nice to Say Interviews. We back at you again, and I'm here with um one of the homeboys, somebody I've been, been wanting to get on the podcast to talk to, to have an opportunity to run down his his movement. And, you know, basically the things that this guy going on, man. Um, but I have, should I introduce you or should I let you introduce yourself, man? Man, I, 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 we could we could do both, man. You, you could say something and then I could say something. No, nah, I've decided to let you introduce yourself. All right. Well, <laughs> see, I go by. <laughs> okay. So, so in the, in the entertainment world, I go by the name of Moose Harris. You know, I don't mind using my government name from time to time because y'all see it on the Facebook Live from time to time. Anthony B. Daniels, that's me. You know, uh, musical polymath, B town originator, things like that. There. Okay, well there you go, man. Moose. What I notice, uh, and I'm gonna call you Moose. Is, is, is people call him Moose? Yeah. I'm gonna call him Moose. Um, yeah, what yeah. I noticed online is, man, your Moose Harris Twitter account is actually kind of popping. <laughs> I mean, I don't have that many Twitter followers, and you seem to have a a good deal, man. So that's that's a that's a good a look. So before we even, without further ado. Y'all should go ahead on and follow that man at, at Moose underscore Harris. The, yes. You know what I'm saying? Um, seem like you got a lot of things and you keep that well well versed and well updated, so to speak. But um, so reason I wanted to keep you on there, man. But before, well, let me just put it like this, man. Why they call you? Uh -huh. why, why do they call you Moose, man? Why they call me Moose, man? It, it's it's a long story. Part of it, well, actually, majority of it is from from something that I'm not even involved in too much anymore, and that's actually playing sports. You know, from a uh, New Iberia Freshman High, shout out to the to that 94, 95 Freshman High team. Y'all know who y'all are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they uh, they gave me the nickname at one practice. You know what I'm saying? And and it just stuck. So, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person back then who, who wouldn't let nobody, you know, try to jump over me or nothing like that. They gave me five files. Like, you know, I try to use them when I was in there. Stuff like that there. Oh, so you, f <laughs> you foul a lot. So that's why they refer to you as a moose. Hey, that's man. funny. <laughs> hey, just letting you know it is old basketball days, man. You know, so I'm what I what I'm gonna what I'm going to make sure that I do and don't do in this interview is okay. that I'm gonna make sure that I don't let you run over the interview because what I've noticed is you got a lot of platforms on social media where you're out here doing different things and you got right. what what people refer to as the DJ voice. You got the mic voice, man. So I don't want to. I don't want to get into no mic voice competition with you here today. Right. I mean, I understand what you do well. I'm gonna let you do it well, but I don't need you over here overstepping your bounds and trying man, to. Look, um, I I'll shine. I'll shine me right here. <laughs> look, I've been paying attention to the Best Friend Weekend for months now, and and I see how y'all gets down, and I know how you gets down. And before I say anything else, bro, I'm gonna just say that I'm proud of you for 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 creating a platform. Cause I, like I said, I know you from way back, and I know what you was doing way back, or what you was developing way back. And I'm I'm glad to see that it's going on the way it is going on now. Well, we can start. We can start right there, man. Look, um, I tell people all the time that I, I give credit to a few people who gave me my start in, um, let's just say performance art. Cause right now right. what we doing, um, with the podcast, it's just, it's entertainment. My friends ask me all the time, what's, what's your goal? Are you going for sponsors? Are you going for YouTube clicks? Are you going like, what's, what's the ultimate goal? And for me, it's always been entertainment. Like we're trying to entertain people. We're trying to, um, have people with some thought provoking conversations for people to talk about. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it all began when, uh, for those of y'all who know, if you know, you know, that um, I had a little burgeoning rap career as exposure back in the day. And uh, I credit La Dialogue from Memphis. Shout yeah. out La Dialogue. And, yes, yes. Um, and Moose Harris is the two people who really kind of put me in a position to start with rap because I think you guys came along right at a time when the median was switching from like, I guess cassettes and cds well cds being kind of an unattainable place to be right 
where it was right. like getting your music on a CD is hard. Right. So you have to have the people who have the um the the capabilities to be able to take the music that you're trying to do, the beats and everything, and then get that onto a medium that you can get out there. And it just was hard to do. And I think that you guys were like on the cutting edge, both you and the dialogue as far as understanding that y'all wanted to get the recording equipment and y'all wanted to be able to be the person to produce, to engineer music, so to speak. And yeah. uh, y'all were the ones doing it and y'all guys were the ones who gave me my start. So what what brought you to that point to where uh, that's something you wanted to do? Well, I mean, one thing I realized, especially in the years living in New Orleans pre-Katrina, was that it was always good to to develop a team. I mean, music-wise, I mean, the two biggest companies had just signed their big deals, Cash Money and No Limit, late 90s, early 2000s. They had just did they deal as a team. It wasn't like one artist from the label who got the contract. You know, it was the whole entire thing. So I'm like, if they could do it, and then all of us being from New Iberia, we're all trying to do this music thing, we can do it. And then, you know, it's also... I know my place, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I don't necessarily have to be the front man. I know I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even rapping mm. back then, you know, at all. You know, I just want to be, I knew y'all could rap. Y'all were cool. Y'all knew what y'all was doing. I had the musical background with the instrumentation. I'll put the tracks together. Y'all spit the lyrics. Let's get this out there. That's the way I looked at it. Um, and just a side, uh, a side, sidebar shout out. To the whole crew, yeah. the whole Platinum Plus crew. I remember yeah, I had yeah. a I had a lyric. Let me think about how it went. Um, uh, trying to go Platinum Plus, Murder Legend, Gatton, dog, ABD and Young Simon. I'm gonna get at you, dog. That was the whole crew. ABD, that was you. Yeah, yeah. Young yeah, Simon, you. Murder Legend, Gat. That was the whole. You know what I'm saying? D West. Yes, that yes. was the whole the whole crew, Lobos. man. I don't know. I don't know where them boys at these days, man. Except for um, uh, shout out. I've seen um. Uh, Get online and we go back and forth every now and again. And uh, my boy Lewis, obviously, I've me and Lewis still run it. But I've um, hollered at Gat recently. I've hollered at Gat recently, and by recently, you know, within the last few weeks. And and I hear from I hear from Lewis like once every year, year and a half, usually through social media or something. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, hopefully everybody's still um, still all the way up. You know what I'm saying? They had yeah. They had different situations why we went our different ways, but I mean, right. things happen, but I mean, you know, you, you grow, and I think everybody kind of come full circle, man. Now, people from Xavier um, might remember this, that you were responsible for a seminal moment in my rap career, and I'm just going to put it like this. I went from kind of like rapping on like a little, kind of on a small scale, in a group, or with people like kind of making my recordings and pressing play and um just you know, just some little local things, but then I right. dropped that We Hate Allen, and I remember um, yes, we put that together um, at your apartment. It was, it was a big, it was a big oh. cut. Uh, it's exposure, the Woo. shooting star, the teacher up in here. One more time for your mind going down. Hey, everybody, uh, don't doubt him. Y'all been waiting for it on the streets. You know we smoke by the pound and drink by the gallon. So a lot of hating niggas hollering. We hate Allen. Taking trips to PA, to Memphis, out to Dallas. And all you hating niggas hollering. We hate Allen. He way too old for games, but way too young for marriage. So a lot of hating hoes hollering. We hate Allen. And when he step out and floss with pieces that's full of carrots. All you hating niggas hollering. We hate Allen. Niggas love to hate Allen cause he got all, all the hoes. Hoes love to hate him cause he always call him hoes. He got flows. His lungs hate him cause he blow Joe's. And showing sure up hate him because uh, a nigga got that glow, but he ain't the last dragon. Uh uh-uh, uh, nah, old nah. folks hate him cause his pants is sagging and razor zigzagging. He never oh, known for bragging. The boy keeps it real, but yet still haters hate when they heard he, he had, had a deal. deal. Probably they feel like they rhymes is better. Uh, they talk about hoes and straps and weed and cheddar. He known as a trendsetter. Never stick to the norm. He been in college three years, still living in the dorm. He don't like to perform. He's Why? an underground legend. And any competition is first, it's never, never second. second. And Mike's he be wrecking, just trying to live like Devin. Want to see him hit him up on Black Planet. Exposure 3 you know, seven. Smoke by the pound. It, it was a big a cut gallon, so a in the Xavier community. Let's just put it that way. And it, it sprung boy me to being like, okay, working with some other producers and doing some big things because, you know, the potential. But, I mean, you know, y'all was responsible for that. So that was a definitely a good look. 
Um, yeah, man. I mean that that time period. Matter of fact, believe it or not, it was it was a, a seminal moment for you, but it was it's actually a moment for me as well. Because just as it transferred things for you as if you got to realize on our end of New Orleans, because all the rest of us we were all at UNO. You know, you and Lil Di was at Xavier. We were all at UNO. So, as a matter of fact, that was the semester, if I'm not mistaken, the same semester that I moved off campus from Private Place to the legendary Curry Street. Mm -hmm. So, We Hate Allen, as a matter of fact, we did on Curry Street, and We Hate Allen might have been no worse than the second song I might have recorded at Curry Street Hmm. overall. You know what I'm saying? No, I definitely remember recording it at Curry Street. The timing, yeah. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I know, I know it was one of the first ones because I know the computer hadn't even made it to a spot in between the living room and the kitchen yet. It was still on the window side over there by the closet. That's how long ago it was. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, that that was that was a a, a hot little mixtape thing to do, sir. And I'm I'm glad everybody peeped it out. And yeah, we we yeah, that was a, definitely <laughs> definitely. So, you know, I say all of that, but enough about me. Why do we have you on here, man? Look, I want to talk about some of the things that you go on, that you got going on. So, obviously, okay. um, Tuesday nights, 10 to midnight, um, w- WHYR 96.9 in Baton Rouge. She got the right. um, Urban Flosaurus radio, sta- radio network, right? right. Yeah, and, I mean, Urban it's been Flo going Saris on for, like, show. nine years, right? Well, this is we're in the midst. It's going to be nine years exactly in uh in August. Tell us all about Urban Flosaurus, man. Man, Urban Flosaurus is is a real full circle thing in my life. I grew up with the whole cassette thing. What may have you? Part of the reason why I'm not good at video games today is because I spent way too much time with cassette tapes and karaoke machines growing up as a kid. You did. So Urban Flosaurus, I would just randomly given an opportunity. Went literally in one day went from artists presenting something to somebody to being asked if I want to do a radio show. And I was like, hell yeah. So Urban Flow Stars, I emphasize a lot of independent underground exclusive hip hop, R and B, urban shows, things like that, just from all over the world. And just giving that opportunity, that platform, like we used to do back in the day. So instead of me just recording people now, I want people to bring me their recordings so I can spend them to all the places I'm at. Okay, so you like you advertise it as anything with groove from Louis Armstrong to the roots, the best in independent, Plant. underground, hip hop, R and B and beyond. So yes, sir. when when you pulling together these things, how are you normally getting your catalog of things that you play on your radio show? Man, to be honest with you, I say seventy five percent of the time, there really isn't a set plan. What I want is just communication with people. If music sound good, the music sound funky. I'm a spin it. And since like in the last couple of years, I didn't got into the actual literal DJing side. I ain't the greatest DJ in the world, but I can hold a time down and I know temples and things like that, you know? So it, it works so well with the motto because I can pull things from anywhere and just mix it together towards things, you know? And, and literally it's just based upon how either I feel or, or how the listeners may feel, you know, taking a request, just, you know, it's just that, that live interaction, between situations i don't i don't usually go into an episode necessarily with a set theme i may have a set title for the show or for an episode or what may have you but as far as like a set theme or what may have you nah 75 percent of the time i'm gonna just start playing music and just see where things go you know so i mean so this is every tuesday night for like 10 years you're talking you got a two-hour block um i mean we do a podcast one hour a week for like the last two years and mm-hmm. um, a lot of the things that we talk about on just the Best Friend Weekend podcast is a lot of current events is what's happening that week. So right. we come into it with a, a script of these are the things we want to talk about and let's make sure we hit our points. You're saying that every week you just kind of, for, for all intents and purposes, freestyling for two hours on air? Man, I, I put it to you this way. If I still had a copy of We Hate Allen in my library and I may or may not... I doubt it, but I may. If I did, I would probably ha- make sure I played that song somewhere within like the first 30 minutes and then just build around the concept that, okay, I'm going to play Exposures We Hate Allen tonight. Literally, mm. that's that's really how it is. I'm, I don't go in saying, okay, well, let me find a set of songs that, that attribute toward this or, or you know. Now, I've done a couple of episodes here and there. Like I have a couple of things that's called like communication music where I may get a little bit more focused on on more of the conscious, political, you know, things of that vibe. You know, I've done that a couple of times based off of things that have happened 
in the country. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think I did one a little bit after 2014, and I think I did another one like after 2016. You know, things of that nature. Um, I've done mixes before, like for WHYR specifically. I've actually done a mix of them before because they were doing the live voting coverage. So you know, voting night. In America, they're doing a live coverage as results are coming in, but their coverage was spill over an hour or so into mine. So instead of me doing a regular show, well, I'm going to just put this mix together, tie into the fact they're talking about, you know, it's November 2nd or whatever the voting day may be for that particular year and just fill in from there. But for the most part, nah, man, I'm, I I know I got a bunch of music on me. I know I've downloaded music from people submitting it to me, urban.flosaurus at gmail.com. And and whatever I receive from them, if it reminds me of something else I know I already have, well, then there you go. I already know. 20 to 30 songs in a two-hour period is going to happen. Unless I go into overtime, then I just keep going from there. Um, definitely, I'm just going to quick plug. You're going to start. We're going to need the, the uncle's new cut, Best Friend Weekend, spinning every week. So I'm going to send that to you before we get off of the air. Please do, let man. Me, please do. Let me ask you a question um, about parameters and rules. Um. You're on a you're on a radio show. Is this an internet radio show? I mean, I, you, you're saying ninety six nine, so that's a regular FM radio show. Yeah. See the see the thing. You got to take a step back from the whole thing now. WHYR. I love them. I've been on the air out of out of the eight and a half years I've been on the air. I've been on the air with them for seven. But you also have to realize that I'm syndicated. Okay. So I'm on the air literally on terrestrial radio in New Orleans. Okay. But I'm also literally on internet radio, say in san francisco or chicago or dublin and these are all legitimate places i'm on the air you know or i might be on a small terrestrial outlet that's in seoul south korea you know what i mean so the answer to that question is literally both you know so so if if someone in our audience is trying to check out your radio show this week like we we having this interview they hear about you they're like hey look let me see what this guy's doing what do they find it where do you find you at well, I mean, that's all the live stuff we talked about. There. I also have, you know, the podcast there too. Okay. Any podcast app you have should be able to find Urban Flow Sars. I originated it on iTunes and on Podomatic and on Mixcloud, but the iTunes link allows it to go to any app uh, that you may have on a smartphone. You okay. Know what I'm saying? So Android, iTunes, whatever. I, I want to double that question though, because the question I'm asking really is, do you have mm-hmm. parameters as far as like, you know, this got profanity in the song, you can't play it because it's on a radio type thing. Is that what's going oh, what? on? Because you, you're saying yeah, that you, I mean, it's also a podcast, though, right? Well, see, well, see what the way I apply it is, I started the show on the FCC airwaves. Shout out to KSCL 91.3 out there in Shreveport, Centenary College Radio. You know what I'm saying? I started Shreveport it out people there. people are all, weird, man. Just FYI. I, hey, <laughs> I lived in Ruston and Shreveport for a year and a half. I totally understand what you're saying. <laughs> you weird like Lowe's. But, uh, no, no, I know. I ain't weird like Lowe's. They, they <laughs> weird like Lowe's. Not me. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other story. <laughs> but uh, but I started on terrestrial radio. So literally out to the airways, hear me in your car radios, what may have you. So I've always taken that approach right there. Now, the borderline stuff about it is I will take the general radio edited posts because I'm syndicated. But that doesn't necessarily mean that a station I'm on is going to play me at the exact same time. Like the station in Baton Rouge, for instance, will play me on Tuesday nights from 10 to 12. The station in New Orleans is going to, is going to have me on the air on Saturday nights from 11 to 1 and then sometimes all the way to 3, regardless if I'm there live or they're playing a syndicated episode of mine. You know, the station in San Francisco has me on in Saturday afternoons. The station in Chicago has me on on Thursdays. So, you know, it's, it's all different times. When I was on the air here in Lafayette, I was on the air Mondays and Thursdays, but from like 8 to 10. So I just generally took the, the, the regular FCC approach to just keep it safe. We're going to do radio editing music. That way, any radio station could pick me up. I can go for it right there, slip it into the podcast like that, just, just one-stop setup. But I understand what you're saying because... Them safe harbor rules, I surely took advantage of them when I'm on late at night. You know, if I'm, especially when I'm on live. When I was on the Shreveport, cursing it up on it, as long as it's after 10 o'clock, I was good, according to the FCC and anybody else. You know, if something slips during that time when I'm on the air live, nah, I'm supposed to be good, according to the FCC. What uh, What's your audience, man? Who is your audience? People, people who love music and don't spend the majority of their time listening to 
what they think is popular. My audience. Hold on, that sounds uh, ridiculous. You said that you your audience is people who love music but don't like what they think is popular. Right. They as in themselves, or they as in the universal they. Both, as a matter of fact, both because check this out. Urban flow stars, like I said, I emphasize an independent, underground, exclusive hip hop, R and B, and beyond. Motto is playing anything with a groove from Louis Armstrong to the Roots. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of the music I play, eighty five to ninety percent of the music I play, you're not gonna hear on any one of the number of stations you may have in your immediate market or your immediate area. Because for one reason or another, the way the system is set up these days, since 1996 specifically, you know, most of the artists I play are going to have next to no chance at all to get on terrestrial radio. Like, I'm going to use... Well, I can't send you that uncle know. shit because we, we, we going on BET, you heard me? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Not, not just... <laughs> now, is that uncut? <laughs> yeah, some. But go ahead. You know, so, I mean, it's... So, because, you know, a lot of stuff that I, that I play is not going to be anywhere else that is going to take maybe the average person to listen a couple of times here or there to to recognize a song and decipher. Because, you know, the average person has to do something, hear something, or see something two to three times before they actually remember it. So, what I'm hoping for is that I could have somebody stick around for two to three episodes. I may have a certain song or two that's within those set of two or three episodes or whatever the case may be then, you know, they're going to try to remember it. And, you know, just hopefully they'll expand their horizons a little bit more than, than what they may do on the typical Spotify playlist or even on, you know, the typical terrestrial radio station. Do um do you ever get payola requests? Yes. Okay. Have not done a single one a day in my life. I'm I'm not risking that. I, I, I mean, listen, I do, they got I a do, lot of I aspiring do people. Listen, they got grown up people I know who like, they doctors and they pharmacists in 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 mm-hmm. the area, and they went through all of this schooling, but they still have this, um, I guess, dream. And we're gonna talk about dreams a little while. We're gonna we're gonna get mm-hmm. back to that because that's a big focus of what I wanna I wanna discuss. But they got people who okay. still want to live this dream of rapping, and they don't might not know the avenue. How do you get from like the the Grammys was on? Like, how do you get from? A mixed like from writing some music and recording it in your in your in your crib to a Grammy. Like, how do you get it to the radio? Like, what's the avenues that it gets from point one to point two to point three to people hearing it for how it leaks to the beatbox? How people getting it in the streets? And what role do you think you play in it? I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a bridge basically. Are you a bridge you know, or are you a gatekeeper? I'm 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 a bridge. Okay. I'm a bridge. I can't I can't necessarily say gatekeeper because it's 2019. There there are hundreds of ways to have your music seen or listened to by people. Another and, way to say that is that, niggas stop complaining if you ain't getting your music on the radio because it's 2019 man, and you can make it happen. Man, look, I put it to you this way. Payola, the reason why I don't fuck with Payola is because first of all it's illegal and number two that that's too much i'm i'm like let's just be real i ain't no street nigga at all you know what i'm saying i i'm i'm not street i'm middle class you know what i'm saying i'm suburban let's just be real about it but that don't make me no less black you hear me so it leads to a whole bunch of things i didn't witness a couple of things in this industry where people didn't try it and it didn't work it didn't work in real ways for some people sometimes so i'm not gonna touch it you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want anybody messing with the situation that I have. But at the same time, I'm also offering directly, like, I will say this all night, urban.flowsars at gmail.com. Just send me the radio edits, send me some information from you, and it really comes down to this. If it jam, I'm spinning it. If it don't jam, I'm going to tell you it don't jam and come back with something else so I can give you a chance to spin it. I mean, that's that's really how simple it is. Now, the next part about it is people recognizing what you do. Well, I can only do so much. I'm going to have about 20 to 25 artists on my radio show in a one episode in two hours, give or take, whether or not it's live or syndicated or what may have you. You know what I'm saying? It's I can promote that one episode. I can promote Urban Flow Stars as a whole to people, you know, and, and they're going to watch. They're going to listen. They're going to download. They're going to tune in. But if none of them artists 
get into it and promote the fact that their song might be one of them 20, 25, 30 songs that's playing in this episode and generated from there, when they defeating the purpose of being a part of it. That's the real true thing about it is it goes, it's supposed to go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving you the platform to have the shit spun all over the place, terrestrially, internet wise, podcast wise, app wise, website wise, whatever. Your role is supposed to A, make the music, and then B, promote the fact that your music is getting spun on Urban Flow Sorry. Let me ask That's you something. That's the way it's supposed though. to go. Let me ask you something. Do those artists get paid for their spins, like like royalties or whatever? How does that how does that work? Because I've always under, had that understanding that if you play on the radio, X amount of spins equals some kind of a profit. How does that work? Hey, it, it's all a royalty situation. In my particular situation, it depends upon the actual radio station that I'm on. The actual terrestrial ones like WHYR in Baton Rouge or WHIV in New Orleans, they have their payment system going to the publishing that's with the FCC in reference towards royalties and things spun. That's why, for the most part, I have to have a, at least a general playlist of the music that I'm playing towards them. You know, however it trickles down, is so is Joe with that particular state? So if if um if if Lil Microwave send you a send you a um <laughs> a song because it's fire yeah. and it's hot hot because it's Lil Microwave hot, hot. and yeah. and he sent a song and you play it every week for the next year, or is that person going to accrue some kind of royalties through the FCC based upon that? If they have if they have their publishing straight on their end with either ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, one of them, or you know it could even yeah. be people outside the United States. If they have their publishing right with it, and the station that is spinning the music through Urban Flow SARS is has their stuff straight, then yes, okay. every three to four months you should be receiving something. So why are you not putting your own music on there every time? Why are you not just playing because... two hours straight of your stuff? <laughs> Because technically that's illegal too. Okay. Now, you know, I mean, it's, just, it's really just straight up like that. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that anyway, man. I, I get tired of listening to my own shit too, yeah. Man, it or not. listen, I, that, but see, I don't that's get what I tired. Like about having a in the words of Kevin Gates, <laughs> of list, I could listen to Best Friend Weekend and Aldo Nice every day. But go, ahead. yeah, but, but but see, here's the thing about it. You see, I can listen to Best Friend Weekend a lot too, and I can listen to Urban Flow Sars a lot. Like I will listen to old episodes of mine all the time but the thing about it is that's not 30 songs of moose harris i got you you know what i'm saying that's that's oh i got i got this song from this cat in new orleans oh this this cat in chicago oh this cat in ireland sent me this is playing next oh i remember this track when i first got it from this cat in arkansas is that situation got you. you know so i mean something is interesting i, I wanted um uh, to to make you laugh about this man I think we talked about this on the podcast uh, recently, something that burned my Buddha is that yeah. when you click on a Facebook notification to like clear it and all of a sudden it takes you to a Facebook live. Um, I, <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a pet peeve of mine and it's kind of like, damn, I hate to make it look like I just hopped in somebody's stuff and then all of a sudden I'm just right on it, right off. I've probably done that to you more times than anybody on earth because you always wow. come up in the notifications and sometimes I'm just trying to clear my notifications and I'm not even realizing what's in my notification. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even looking to see if it's you or if it's whoever. It's just, oh, it's a notification. Let me clear it. And when I click mm. on it, it brings me to the radio show. And sometimes I listen for a couple of minutes. Sometimes I listen for a couple of seconds. Sometimes I just automatically be like, man, I'm not trying to listen to this. I'm in this meeting. I was just trying to clear my, my things. So, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens all the time. And you like probably my most repeat offender because... But to me, that means that you've always got something popping, something always going on on Facebook Live, um, some kind of way that you're showing what's happening in real time uh, with with Urban Flow Saurus. You told me what Moose Harris was about. Why you call it Urban Urban Flow Saurus? Is, is that like a an extinct dinosaur? <laughs> nah, man. Urban Flow Saurus is is a word that I made up. It's a when nigga I got, dinosaur. I, it's it no. <laughs> Nah, actually, the official the official definition for flow SARS is that the show is a time out. The time out. There's no definite official definition for flow SARS. Hey, you talk. You made you that the, up, you, Brody. But since you're talking, since you're talking to the originator oh, and the okay, author okay, of the okay, word, okay, okay, the originator okay. and the author is trying to give you the definition. Gotcha. Of now we now originated we, word. Now we with it. Go ahead. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a thesaurus of flow. That's what flow sars means. Okay. It's a thesaurus of flow. Ties into that motto that I'll play anything with a groove from Louis Armstrong to the roots. So when you open up a thesaurus, you got a lot of different synonyms, antonyms, different words, definitions, and meanings. And that's what you should expect coming from my show. You get a lot of different flows, flavors, music, old school, new school, independent, mainstream. You know, just have a good time for two hours. I don't know. If if I had a, a slogan that said anything with a groove, it would be like from Freddie Jackson to Maxwell. It wouldn't be Louis Armstrong <laughs> to the roots. But I mean, that's what but, I think when I think groove. But that's just me. But I've, 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 I've actually done it, man. And, and you would be surprised, bro. One thing I tell people a lot is that, you know, the world today is rediscovering bounce music, for instance, right? Okay. Thanks to thanks to Drake, thanks thanks to thanks to even even them that damn Doritos commercial, man. My, I'm still up in the air about that fucking Big Frida. Go ahead, sure. you know, not the the one, no, the one with the Backstreet Boys. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, I'm still up in the air about yeah. that one. Okay. Chance the rapper, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. But what what I've liked about having Urban Flow stars for almost a decade is I've been able to show that. That vibe, that sound, that groove, like from New Orleans, for example, has been involved in music like this for years. So when I say Louis Armstrong, like, for instance, I have a second radio show called The Grapevine, right? Where I'm playing the grown folks music, the R&B, the jazz, you know, the blues, like the grown folks stuff. Like like, like Sunday Morning with Dr. Boogie, you heard Got me? Gotcha. Um, the theme song that I have for that, the, the introductory song I have for that show is Louis Armstrong's Heebie Jeebies. Now, that song is roughly about 100 years old. But if you listen to it and you can't imagine them trigger mans underneath this damn thing, something wrong with you. Hmm. Like, I would dare say Louis Armstrong was the first bounce artist. I would dare say it. You know what I'm saying? And not have a problem saying it because it's just it's just that groove, that vibe from New Orleans, you know? And it happens elsewhere. Like, there's a there's a group, couple of groups from New Zealand. I've been playing out in the last few years, you know, reggae sounds out there in New Zealand, hip hop sounds from New Zealand, what may have you. If you go back in time and go to more of their traditional music from their culture from that time period, you could put them same backbeats and drum patterns that they use in their reggae and hip hop sounds now back to sounds that they you might better have be had talking for, about you know, some aboriginal people. people. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm because hey. Yeah, all right. Just yeah, make a show. That's what I'm saying. So, so yeah, you know, that's why I say from Louis Armstrong to the because roots, I have I to talk to, to you really... about wokeness. If you, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, for the record, I'm about sixty three and a third percent woke. For the record, <laughs> as long as you you're over fifty one percent, that's right. One to eighty, right. you 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 with that's it? Right. You with it? You good? I'm about, I'm about sixty three and a third. We 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 will keep it right about. My there. answer is just mm-hmm. ask. Depend on what day of the week you ask me. Yeah, <laughs> I have my Black Lives Matter hat on at work today, so it is what it is, man. Word, um, man. L- let me ask you something, man. Let me let me get into a um uh, to to a to another question, man, because this is this is a question that let me see. Let me. I want to make sure I phrase this right, um, mm-hmm. to make you know what what I mean by it. Um, you do a lot of things with with the radio, and what I thought when I was in college, uh, shout out uh, one of my homeboys, Darren D, used to be on uh, Q ninety three in New Orleans. We were there, and yeah. um, I used to think that that was cool. You know, he on the radio. You you mentioned Doctor Boogie, um, Troy D, the Black Will. Mm-hmm. I mean, whoever was like the people, these people that we just know in Houston, and Kiati and um, Mad Hatter, and it's like they got these radio personalities that people know, right? So they got right. levels of radio. I mean, I in, in I'm gonna say it in this way. There's radio that everybody in Houston knows. There's radio that everybody in New in Lafayette knows, you know? Mm-hmm. And then there's different levels of radios that continue to go like, it's just like a pantheon, right? There's a, a level of radio that not too many people know about that it's like, okay, this station is playing something and you would almost have to tell me to be on the lookout for it or I wouldn't know about it. Right. Um, I say, I, and, and the question I'm asking is this. It's about following your dreams. And I'm going back to that dreams thing that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had two nothing nice to say interview um, interviews that I've put out. The first one was with the Black Coffee Company. Um, and they're a bunch of guys. And I know you, you've listened to all of these episodes, so you, you're you familiar with it. It's a bunch of right. guys who uh, got together and they're like, they have different jobs, different whatever. And they, they make, they well, I guess they they like sell coffee. I don't know how they get it. I don't know whatever. They sell coffee, right? Then there's right. an additional, uh, the second one I did, it's another guy. And um, he shoots music videos. 
And um, that's Dominique Young. So shout out um, Loyal Brothers Company. Right. The thing about those two mediums is that selling coffee comes across as kind of like on that woke scale, it pushes like 80%, right? It it becomes okay. like one of those things where they, they kind of put this whole, this whole, their whole movement is about blackness and, you know, we black and we sell coffee and we trying to help each other and they got all of these mantras and things of that nature. So it makes it real right. palatable for their, probably their, their um, friends, their colleagues, their family to be like, okay, they're doing this and that's a really, like, that's a, it's a, it's a noble endeavor. The same thing with the music video guy. Now, you know, you might look at him and say, oh, you're doing music videos. That's kind of whack. Oh, but you're doing music videos for Flo Rida and for 2 Chains, And and you the proof is in the pudding there. Right. My thing is, when people like sometimes look at like, okay, you still doing music, uh, Moose. Like, man, you've been mm-hmm. trying to do music for, and that's how they would phrase it, right? You've been trying yeah. to do music. Knowing yeah, full say, well that you say, do music, but you've been trying right. to do music for 20 years. When are you going to give it up? And my thing is, when people scoff and say that your goals and the things that you like to do are unattainable, how do you deal with that and keep pushing? I mean, this thing has been ingrained. Like, for instance, what we was talking about, once again, We Hate Allen again, I had already been doing recordings and things like that for over 10 years by the time we did that you know what i'm saying it it it's it's seriously that much ingrained in my life it's 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 something that that i will always do in some capacity now the thing about it is is that most people don't know how to how to adjust their passions and their dreams to their current situations i say that like this when I started in music, what may have you, I was playing instruments. I was singing, you know, and I just reminded me of Mount Calvary. And I know y'all been talking a lot about religion and Catholicism and things like that. So what may have you. So, you know, singing there, playing instruments, school, church, what may have you. By the time I got to New Orleans, going to college, being in the military, starting to hang around more different influences, of course, from New Iberia to pre-Katrina, New Orleans. That's where the whole rhyming thing for me came in. So I started doing more rhyming, less singing. Now, that didn't stop me from singing because I was still in a in a band doing reggae ska music in front of 200 people in the warehouse district. You know, fast forward past Katrina, what may have you. Now it's like, OK. The recording thing is is up in the air because the people I'm recording with are now living in Atlanta. I still got this stuff I want to do. What am I going to do? Okay, well, I'm going to start booking shows and setting up shit for myself. And why not do it for other people? Because if I get other people involved along with myself, that's more people that come in. And now the money starts kicking in from these shows. All right, so now I'm doing these shows at these venues. Well, I need bigger venues. Well, now people want to suggest, hey, we see you doing shows. Would you like to book this bigger name for it? I'm like, okay, I got the money for it. Hell yeah, because that's even more people through the door. So, you know, it's just... The passion, the vibe, the flow of it all never change. It's just that the particular angle to come into the same conclusions just did. You know what I'm saying? One time I was just a kid playing with cassette recorders. Then I was a singer. Then I was a musician, classical jazz. I'm a rapper, you know, promoter, producer, did, did production for you and other people. Now for the last decade amongst all that, I'm a radio DJ. Syndicated. So it's still saying me. I mean, and I and I guess and you're answering my question, but and, but my my I guess my thought is, have you ever come to that point where you feel like, man, or like friends or family tell you, man, give it up, man, you don't, man, just concentrate on this. Do you feel like you're maybe spreading yourself thin by doing all of this and not concentrating on one or two things? That's like, hey, let me do this and concentrate all my energies on that, as opposed to the variety of things that you're doing it's hard man it's it's really hard to do because for the most part it goes back to what we was talking about with teams the most successful people regardless if it's independent underground or even mainstream aren't necessarily doing it by themselves even the person who may appear to be doing the, the performance side and the business side literally by themselves they may be booking their own shows and tours. They may be setting up 
shows and tours for other people. They may be doing their, having their own publishing. They may be writing their own lyrics, what may have you, getting their own shit pressed or what may have you. That doesn't necessarily mean they're doing every aspect. I know people that can fill in every last aspect I just named, but I can also name something from each one of those people within the process that they aren't doing. They have at least one or two other people that's doing that one aspect of the situation for them. So that officially makes them a team towards this product. You know what I'm saying? So, but not everybody has the availability towards a team. Like when we was doing stuff way back in the day, there was a formulation of a team. Y'all were the artists doing stuff. I was the producer. I was the one trying to bring the business stuff. You know, y'all was writing your own shit. My beats, it came out that way. You know what I'm saying? Platinum Plus, New Eye, all that good stuff. You know what I mean? I, I, it, Teams just come and go, you know? No, I mean, I, I get you. I get you. And I, I, it's like, I guess part of this question is I'm projecting a little bit. Because mm-hmm. a little bit of what I'm asking is... Um, you miss it? No, it... It's not. That's not really where I was going with it. I mean, you do miss you do miss rapping. I mean, that's like rapping was fun. It was creative. It was a creative out, out, outlet. But I'm not gonna lie and not pretend like podcasting isn't my creative outlet. Now I'm able to be just as creative as I was on the mic, but just with words. And it's kind of easier to freestyle when you don't have to rhyme. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of easier to yeah, freestyle yeah. on the air when you don't have to rhyme. So I'm you know I'm born to talk. But my um. I guess the, the the question, and I mean the thought is, it's like even with the podcasting thing, uh, you you listen so you understand this. We're doing a nothing nice to say interview right now. I'm gonna be back mm-hmm. at them in a couple of days, um, recording a, a best friend weekend podcast. We try to put right. the best friend weekend weekend out where we have our little our occasional um, get up in a different city. We got the merch that I'm doing, um, educated ignorance, blackbuster video, men yeah. secure. It's 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 so many different hats of different things that we want to do that I kind of feel there's a little similarities in that, that, um, Oh yeah. That, that that's definitely like similarity. sometimes you want to focus on one thing, but it ends up being when you got all of these different ideas and all these things that you can be good at, you want to tackle a whole bunch of things. So I was just curious as to how do you um, find that balance to understand when you like, like how to kind of slow down and tackle one thing. And I think we both need a little bit of that. It, you just have to you just have to be able to to have things and a given nothing nothing that you do correct me if I'm wrong but nothing that you truly do is ever complete yeah fact it's, it's never complete especially especially the type of stuff we do because it's ongoing series of a product whether whether it's you know a mixtape situation you know it's it's a, it's a never ending series of it because you still have to complete that mixtape you still have to promote it on you know regardless if it's any of our podcasts it's an ongoing thing of it you know what i'm saying and we don't even have individual seasons like most tv shows do so we just keep going on and on it's a matter of just establishing something to be able to place it on the shelf to where it can hold itself up till you need to come back to it like for instance with you I can't name all the different little aspects that you're having with the podcast under the Best Friend Weekend umbrella, but you got, you know, you know you have to do Best Friend Weekend episodes enough to place for people to listen to. And while the people are listening to it, you're now checking on whether or not Best Friend Weekend Weekend is going to kick off and all the details towards that. Once you have all the booking and the logistics for Best Friend Weekend Weekend together, well, you can put that on the side because that's not that's not an event till the future. And, oh, let me get this Black Buster video going and put that up to take the place of the Best Friend Weekend episodes because the most of the listeners should be finishing listening to those right now. So let me put some Black Buster video so you can go listen to that and oh meanwhile what are we doing after best friend weekend weekend are we doing something else yeah. live who else i gotta get booked on you know and that's basically your situation my situation is basically okay i got these urban flow stars episodes and these different stations i gotta make sure these stations get these out here like that oh i gotta put them up on the podcast and oh mighty is coming up so i'm planning some events on that who am i involved with that who am i booking toward the situation and then oh i might as well start thinking about april with festival time period or what may have you and oh i got this person over here who just hit me up in reference towards grant money towards Brown Sugar Music Festival that we do on Sugar Cane Festival Weekend. But since it's Sugar Cane Festival Weekend, I could put that to the side for the next couple of months okay. and wait for the return on that. And in the meantime, oh, I got to do some more episodes because more music is coming in. You feel what I'm saying? Well, I, so I feel it, what it's you, just a matter of I definitely feel what you're stuff. saying. I definitely feel what you're saying. And I think more of kind of my, my general thought is that it's so many different things that – you know, you 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 really got to partition all of that out because if not, yeah. but I think it I think it speaks to a wider just kind of 
thought exercise that I wanted to, um, that I just kind of wanted everybody to think. I mean, people who are listening to this, I feel like everybody's got something that they want to do or that they feel like, man, I could do this. Whatever it means, mm-hmm. man, I, I could, man, I could, I could shoot, um, photography, man. I think I could be good at that. Or right. I could, um, man, I could, I could sew or knit something because I think I could be good at that. Man, I could start this clothing line because I think I could be good at that. I think it's a part of the human condition to want to like things that you're interested in, not necessarily to always try to monetize it. And I think that that's something kind of we have in common. That it's not, mm-hmm. it's not always about the profit motive. We're not always out here trying to monetize it. We're just trying to use our creative umbrellas. And I would encourage that to anyone who's listening to whatever you're interested in, whatever you feel creative about, whatever you feel like, you know, I think I want to try this, try that shit. Because like the Best Friend Weekend podcast started with us just talking, hey, look, our conversations are funny. I wonder what these would, right. what, what this would sound like as a podcast. And then with, within that, it was like, man, you know, sometimes I'd rather not be silly all the time. Sometimes I'd rather have a, an in-depth yeah. conversation with people. Let me start this nothing nice to say, just having some some, some conversations, right? And it, it, it right. It's, it's like whatever comes to your head as far as something that you want to try. Like, And I think that if that message can come through from this podcast, that just going after stuff and just giving it a shot, man, you, if your real friends are going to support you. And they're going to tell you what it is and they're going to tell you what it ain't. So, I mean, yeah, get at, get at your best. And I think that you are a living personification of that, of like going out that. there, going out there and just trying to do your thing, man. And, and you spoke to something that I want to, I want to definitely want to talk about. It was the next thing I wanted to talk about, man. The Brown Sugar Music Festival, man. Tell us, yeah. a, tell, tell us about that, man. Um, I'm, I'm, man. I was, I was a big fan that, of that. That's just the, that's just the next step in the evolution, man. I mean, it, it. Brown Sugar Music Festival is an event that we put on in New Iberia, the Saturday Sugar Cane Festival weekend. Which is in September, usually the end of September. Yeah, and it's the last weekend in September, every year, last weekend in September. So in 2019, that'll be the, the 28th of September, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, Just a free music festival specifically on Hopkins Street, you know, west end of New Iberia, Louisiana, a.k.a. the black side of town. A.k.a. You know, AKA Chirac. A- a- AKA where we was all born and raised and stuff like that. Though. You know? So. I can, AKA you know, go I home mean, before the, dark because the B is dangerous. <laughs> go ahead. I mean, I mean, you know, like I know, but for your listeners who may not know, yeah, Sugar Cane Festival is the big thing in, in New Iberia. Sugar Cane Festival is basically what Mardi Gras is to New Orleans. What Festival International is to Lafayette. Well, that's you know that's something that people so might not so people forth. outside of Louisiana might not know this. So I'm, I think I think we should give a little a little air to that. Okay. Um. Okay. That every city in Louisiana has a festival. Like yes, crawfish festival is in Brobridge. Frog Brobridge. festival in Rain. Um. Rain. Shrimp festival in Delcom. Um. Right. Like everyone's got something. New Iberia right. sugar cane. That's right. That's right. It's agricultural based for the most part, cultural based for the most part. Everybody got their little something, something that's going to happen sometime in between roughly March and October, Mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to be celebrating. We celebrate sugar cane harvest. The big thing about that is and where brown sugar came in is that, you know, it was kind of after all these years, it kind of got one sided in reference towards the way sugar cane festival was celebrated. First of all, what does that mean? First. Well, first of all, Sugar Cane Festival is is all of Iberia Parish, first of all, not just New Iberia. So that's just one thing. What it actually means in the more detail is that, let's just be blunt, most of the shit that was going on for Sugar Cane Festival was all on the white side of town. It was all on, you know, Main Street and Bullany Plaza and, and the street fair was out there by Highway 90 and Lewis Street. You know, it was there was nothing going on on the west end of New Iberia to show that that part of town was a part of the Sugar Cane Festival festivities. So what I did, my friend Panat, shout out to my boy Panat. Is that Envision great. the Berry group? Yes, yes. And Envision the Berry, you know, hit that nonprofit organization, Envision the Berry, Panat leading that. I went to them and was like, yo, matter of fact, Panat grew up on Hopkins Street, you know, so he knows. Time out. Spell Panat, I've, please. P-H-A-N-A-T. Oh, oh, he like, he like, oh, 
He like he um yeah. Asian. Yes. Ha. Yeah. I thought he was like yeah. I thought he <laughs> I thought it was like a little Creole <laughs> name for like peanut. Nah. But peanut. Nah, no, man. <laughs> You remember you remember eight you remember Asia Market on Hopkins Street? Yeah, Oda yeah, by T. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, that's, I know, the how, I know he a Laotian them. dude now. Like it makes sense now. That's now that you just said yeah. it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's them. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went to them. <laughs> I went to them and was like, look, my main thing is in music. My main thing is in entertainment, what may have you. I see we don't have much going on around here. Let's get something. So Brown Sugar, we just reached out to the community and was like, we're going to have this free festival with two music stages, a bunch of bands, a few hip hop artists, a couple of gospel acts, you know, right here on Hopkins Street during the day on Saturday. We we would like your help. And the community came through and we had it. Did y'all try to go to the white side of town? They was like, you want y'all want to have this music festival? Put not around here. <laughs> 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 But not, but not around. This boy. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So yeah. How long? This is y'all gonna be your second or third one this year. This this gonna be a 2019 is gonna be our second. Year. Okay. So I saw pictures and stuff. It seemed like y'all had a decent turnout. Like and and for me, it feels like you know you could once you do stuff. You had a couple of local artists. Was uh what's his name in it? I thought I saw uh yeah Purple Planet was over there. Was that him or was that uh, somebody else? Wait, who you who you talking about? No, it might not have been. I'm, I don't, I don't I don't know. I had a bunch of a bunch of different. You had some people man. from Shout New Orleans to like, too and Baton Rouge, right? I had, man, I had people from Texas. I had people from Mississippi. I had people from Baton Rouge. I had people from New Orleans. People from New Iberia, Lafayette. You know, yeah, it, it was it was really covered. It wasn't just you know. I was it, talking it, about D Bills. I thought D Bills was performing. Maybe I was wrong. I thought I saw that on. Uh uh You, you uh, Herc. I know you saw Herc. Herc the Jerk. Shout out to Herc the Jerk. Yeah, I listened to his mixtape, right. and guess what? I put not, yeah, yeah. I put not listen to it again. Jesus no, because let me stop. Oh Lord, stop, stop. <laughs> no, the, I, views I like, I, the views the express. The views express no, by Aldo Nice. I'm clowning. I actually did like, <laughs> and I could probably tell you right off the top, it was the last song on the, on his mixtape I was listening to. It It was like um, something kind of music. Like, damn, I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, I'm gonna shout that out in a second. But go ahead, right, right, yeah. do that. Tell us a little bit more about the festival so we can make sure we know. Man, it's. It, like I said, Brown Sugar Music Festival. It's a free community event on Hopkins Street. We took up two blocks of Hopkins Street, went directly to the city of New Iberia to the mayor. Had about had about a good three, four meetings with them. Spent X amount of dollars. Had to raise like ten thousand dollars roughly for it to go off. And you know, book some bands, book some acts. Had to turn away some people because I, I had people from as far away as like it was called San Antonio. The song was called City Black and, Cream, just for the record. I kind of like that Black Cream. That 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 that's, oh, you got that's it, my you hurt got the jerk jam. And he even had that gotcha. he had that King Rat song, and that's wild. You should have never put that out there, man. Y'all shouldn't be beefing. But continue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Side notes all over, yeah. please. But yeah, you know, it just it was just a you know something to do for the West Side of New Iberia, give back to the community, something free because. I mean, most of the things for Sugar Cane Festival, just like with most festivals, most events, things are going to cost. You know what I'm saying? And and New Iberia ain't exactly the, the richest town in the state. You know what I'm saying? So we got to give some to the people so they can feel apart without, you know, busting their balls over prices of going to shows and, and carnivals and, and things of that nature. Nah, you know? man. So it, we just put it right there in the center of town. And that's a great, and that's a great. It's a great thing to give back to your hometown. We always looking for ways to do it, um, some kind of way, shape, or form. Even if we're not there physically, we're gonna try to be a part of the Brown Sugar Music Festival. If not, we we'll have some merch out there. Something we we gonna make sure we we yes, sir. we make some kind of presence um, felt. Yeah, best best friend best friend weekend ought to become a sponsor. Yeah. That's 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 what I'm gonna just put that out there right we now. Can, we ain't got no money, but the, uh, so the <laughs> other thing is, man. One one I mean, I can't. We can't not have this interview without talking about this aspect of it, man. Listen. Okay. Listen. We talked about you having all these hustles and 13 jobs. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Mr. Hydrate or Intoxicate, man. I yes, One of sir. my partners yes, said sir. that you've seen more corners of the Superdome in the New Orleans Arena than any person from New Iberia ever has. That's what we think. Yeah, I probably have. We think you I have seen have. more of the Superdome in the New Orleans Arena than most people on Earth. Um. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. You was in the, uh, you was on the news and in some articles earlier this, um, or last last year about um, your participation with the Saints and tell us what you do with the Saints and with the Pelicans and with the New Orleans Arena and with the Superdome. Yeah, 
it's I mean, it, it goes back it's a, it's another one of them tie ins for the last twenty seasons. I've been I've Does been, that sound uh, crazy? You're not even old, man. Twenty seasons, dog. That sounds crazy. I, I know, right? You know, I've been I've been a beer man in the Superdome for the last twenty years, you know? So it just it's another aspect of it. it. That's what took the place of me actually playing sports mm. was being involved because I'm a diehard New Orleans Saints fan, and and the situation was simple. You mean to tell me that motherfuckers want to pay me to go see my favorite team play every week? Mm. You motherfucking right, I'm there, mm. and I get to be I get to be myself in reference towards you know talking to people and relaying to people. And if I throw them a couple of extra word about what's going on musically with me, then you know that's more advertising for me. You know, so so you be sliding mixtapes out there with with um, beers and, and, oh, no, and peanuts. I, 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 I no, I don't. I don't slide no mixtapes, but uh, you know, a flyer or two might have gotten out to to a couple of people. Ain't nothing wrong now. with that. You, you know, a couple of text messages here now. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You should have. Um, I might need to pay you. That might be something I could sponsor you for to hand out cards and say, "Listen, best friend, we can podcast to everybody who in that." Uh, hey, we, we 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 might be we might be able to get that done appropriately and appropriately. You know? <laughs> but nah, man, it's a um that that's that's a crazy set of um. Uh, circumstances that you there, man but that seemed like hard work man up and down them steps i ain't gonna lie i mean like i said it, it it took it that's what took the place of me actually playing sports and having to go to the gym and lift weights is, is carrying those cases a bit up and down those stairs man and i i didn't seen it all up in there anything that had happened to the saints or the hornets pelicans like in the last 20 years since we had ricky williams i've basically been there for it you so, you said you had a yeah. you said you had a thought on um because I saw something else. Um I'm not even gonna talk about them Thomas right now, but I I saw something <laughs> them, that they that they posted talking about some trying to figure out what their favorite um AAFL team was or AAF, whatever. And, AAF, yeah. And I was like and then they picked one of them is like, we're gonna pick San Antonio because that's the closest team to home. And I'm like, but you like right. the Cowboys. Like Explain to me what's your theory, because you said you have a theory on why people don't um, support their home teams. Because something about you that I definitely noticed oh. is that you a homer, like like I'm a homer. We support the home team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Home home teams all day, man. This is the theory about it, bro. The problem is, is that the home team when we were growing up in the '80s and '90s, none of the home teams were really that good. I ain't going to lie to you. The very first sporting team I ever started to support was the 76ers. I'm a Sixers fan. I'm I'm Dr. J, Andrew, Tony, and Moses Malone all day. We didn't have a basketball day. team, so you, you can do what you want with that. Right. Right. You can do what you want with that. It took the Saints It took the Saints 20 years to make the playoffs, bro. That gives people way too much time to decide to go elsewhere, man. It's, it's just like in business. They them losing was a bad business decision, you know what I'm saying. So in that time, when you got a hometown team that basically sucks, like they did back in the '80s and '90s for the most part, you know, people just just veered away to to other situations. Most of the people we know from our area that support other teams are teams that were winning at that time when they were like kids or teenagers and stuff like that. Forty ers Cowboys, Pittsburgh. You know, so on and so forth. You don't, you don't hear many, uh, you don't hear many New York Jet fans out there in the B. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? You don't have too many Miami Dolphins fans out there in the B. You know what I'm saying? You don't have. So you, you saying they just too many they San just, Diego Charger fans in the B. So you saying they hopping on the wave? <laughs> they, 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 they threw both hands up and waved, waved, <laughs> wait, yeah, just like that. You know what I'm saying? So. That that's my theory towards it, man. The people, it's all about perception, just like everything else we didn't talked about tonight, man. It's just basically about perceiving what feels good for them. In that case, they saw the hometown team wasn't good. What felt good for them was Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Troy Aikman, Doug Williams doing their thing, so they rolling with them. Well, like you said, sometimes the audience don't know what's good for them. What they think is good might. Might not be what's actually good, so that's why you gotta exactly. play them a track. Exactly. That's um, exactly, which is why growing up, people like me, I stuck everything with Saints. If I was making up a team in the neighborhood, I was whatever neighborhood I was in. Saints, elementary school, you know, North Street Saints, straight up. <laughs> even though the nickname was the Falcons, you know what I'm saying? It, that's just how it was. North Street, North Street, been gone for about 400 years. Maybe you is old, man. Maybe you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have a North Lewis no more. I don't think, man. They, all no, them schools, no, no, get they shut all down. still. Exist? No, they there. They there. Oh, well, they still there. One of them got shut down recently. I don't know, man. I don't know what you're talking about. But look, man. Um, uh, Moose, man. Look, it's been a um, 
it's been my privilege to sit down and run it with you for a little while and just kind of catch up on Man, some things. Hopefully, it's um, been an honor. one more time, one more time. Shoot out all of your um, contact information so people could go check out your radio st- show this week. They got visual media, in, so may- they could come check you out on Facebook. Just check yeah, out yeah. What, you, what you look like while you're spinning. You go ahead and let them know. I got you. Yeah, so the name of the radio show is called Urban Flow Saurus. The second word is F-L-O-S-A-R-U-S. You can Google it, and you'll, it'll pop up all over the place. With pictures of For dinosaurs. You artists, DJs. <laughs> Stop it. Are uh, you artists, DJs, producers? Urban.flowsaurus at gmail.com. Send me your radio edited music and your information, and let's get cracking from there. For all you listeners, social media wise, at Moose underscore Harris on Twitter and Instagram. That's the dash in the ground, not the one in the middle of the air. Facebook is where all the videos are for the most part. I got a few of them on YouTube under Urban Flow Sars, under Moose Harris. They got a few of them, but the majority of them, as I'm transferring them over to YouTube, is on Facebook under my government name, Anthony B. Daniels, the original ABD. You know, and uh, the Facebook page, Urban Flow Sars, UrbanFlowSars.com is going to be up and running again sometime soon. So, yeah, just there's all kinds of ways to get in contact with me. Just holler at your boy. All right, man. Look, I'm, 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 um, you talked about something that I've actually kind of been doing and just kind of, man, this might be the first time I'm speaking it out loud, but, um, I'm, okay. I'm going to be dropping a season of Blackbuster video in about a month. So in February, okay. I'm going to record eight episodes of Blackbuster video. We're going to drop one a week for March and, um, March and April. And that's going to be season one of Blackbuster video old movies and stuff so i'm gonna get you on black buster video you're gonna be on one of the episodes man okay cool so we'll get that popping so um man look once again man y'all thanks for everybody out there listening man to one of this next uh nothing nice to say i ain't got nothing i ain't got i ain't got i ain't got nothing nice to say (laughs) <laughs> all right, man. Look, we'll all let y'all next time. Hey, we out of here. When you record that, man, give me give me the acapella so I can make the remix. Man, we're going to get the uncle on that, man. Look, I'm going to hook you up with the uncle. I ain't got nothing. 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 I ain't got n